My name is Michael Engelbert. I'm one of the surgeons here at Vitreous Retina Macular Consultants of New York and I'll be talking about retinal detachments today. So who gets a retinal detachment? Most people who get a retinal detachment are older and many have had cataract surgery. However, young people can get detachments too, usually if they're very nearsighted or if they've experienced trauma. Some systemic diseases can lead to retinal detachments as well, with diabetes being the number one offender. Those who have had a detachment in the other eye or have someone in the family with this problem are also at higher risk. So how do you get a retinal detachment? As we get older, the transparent jello-like substance that fills our eye, which we call the vitreous, shrinks and becomes more fluid. Eventually, it separates from the retina in the back of the eye and does not cause any problems in the majority of people. However, in some people, the vitreous may be sticky and in the process of separating from the back of the eye, it may pull on the retina, causing retinal tears and allowing fluid from the vitreous to go underneath the retina and detach it. The retina depends on nutrition from the eye wall and, once detached, slowly stops working. What are the early signs of a retinal detachment? When the vitreous separates from the retina, flashing lights can be seen, particularly in the dark. Also, floaters can be seen. Some people describe these as seeing cobwebs or a bunch of little bugs. At this point, the retina may be torn, but not detached. If only a retinal tear is present, a detachment can usually be prevented by an in-office laser procedure. If, however, enough time passes or the tear is large enough to let fluid pass under the retina, the retina will detach, which can be seen as a shadow in the periphery of the visual field. Some people describe that as a gray curtain or a dark wall moving in from above, below or the side. At first, only side vision may be affected, but as more and more of the retina detaches, the area of central vision used for reading and seeing fine detail will be compromised. Untreated retinal detachments eventually lead to complete blindness. Often, eyes with long-standing detachments become painful, blind and unsightly and sometimes need to be removed. How is a detached retina treated? There are various ways of fixing retinal detachments. Rarely a detachment can be contained by surrounding it with laser treatment. Sometimes, a gas bubble with freezing treatment or laser therapy can be used in the office to repair a detachment. In other eyes, the vitreous is removed in the operating room under a microscope, a surgery referred to as a vitrectomy. Laser is applied to the retinal tear or tears and a gas bubble is placed in the eye to keep the retina attached while it heals from the surgery. In other cases, a scleral buckle surgery may be most appropriate. The scleral buckle gently indents the eye wall to close the retinal break from the outside and the fluid from below the retina is either drained during the procedure or is allowed to be absorbed by the body. In some cases, scar tissue has to be removed from the surface of the retina for it to reattach. This is often the case after trauma and in diabetic retinal detachments. Many factors determine what the optimal procedure is for an individual in their eye, and we at BRM pride ourselves in providing the full spectrum of retinal detachment repair options to provide a customized approach that is right for the individual patient. Overall, the chance of successful reattachment are greater than 95% with a single surgery. Factors such as complex detachments that occur after trauma, presence of scar tissue or detachments due to diabetes have a somewhat lower chance of initial success, but we can now treat many detachments that were previously deemed unfixable with modern vitreoretinal surgical techniques. What are the risks of retinal detachment surgery? As with any surgery, infection or massive bleeding are concerns but are relatively rare, affecting less than one in a thousand. If the retina does not reattach properly or scar tissue forms that pulls it off again, another surgery may be necessary. Cataracts may progress more rapidly after vitrectomy surgery and pressure in the eye can rise transiently but sometimes permanently. What can you expect after surgery? There may be some pain after the surgery from the manipulation of the eye and the stitches that may be present on the surface of the eye. An eye patch is usually placed on the eye and is taken off at the first postoperative visit the day after surgery. If a gas bubble is placed in the eye, special head positioning may be necessary for the bubble to properly support the retina. This bubble will initially make the vision very blurry, but vision returns as the bubble naturally disappears. Depending on the severity and duration of the detachment, vision may return quickly or may take several months to stabilize. Taking it easy for a few weeks is probably a good idea, but depending on the procedure, patients often can be back to their normal lives within a few days. 